Hello and welcome to this episode of Demystified as we explore home cooking in a modern world. Hello, I'm Linda and I'm here with Paul. Hello, Paul. Good morning, Linda. Monday morning. It is. It's bright and early Monday too. Yeah. Paul, one of the great things that I discovered about steam oven cooking and combi steam oven cooking were desserts. And probably the first things you started doing for cooking with steam was making uh, reverse lemon tart, which is one of our friend's favourites and a must whenever he comes over. And one of my favourites, the uh, sticky date pudding, which works so well in a steam oven. And... I think if more than anything, for people who are new to steam oven cooking, they should really try desserts because they are party winners. Yeah, well, I mean, classically, desserts are unfortunately sometimes the most memorable part of the dish because it's the last thing that you eat. So they do play an important role. Um, but steam oven cooking desserts, I mean, if we talk combi steam ovens where we can do you know, more general fan-forced cooking with steam going in. You, we already know from baking, um, you get great results. So a chocolate cake is improved. We know that. Um, but the trick that we found is standalone steam desserts. Um, and they seem to be winners as far as being able to please people and give them something memorable. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's actually the development for the recipes for steamed desserts takes a little bit longer although there's some classics out there christmas pudding and sticky date pudding and such um it does take a little bit longer to get the recipes right but when they do become right they're they're really good so yeah te- it's a really highlights what steam does for texture so recently, and I don't know when we'll go up on the website, we did, it's called a purin, but it, effectively it's a creme caramel. Um, Japanese type version of it, lychee flan, Filipino, similar sort of thing. And as you would know, I've made now probably 20 of them getting it, just trying to get it right. But, um, you know, that's a ideal way to highlight what steam can do for texture um and yeah i mean a lot of egg based custards so creme brulees and all that sort of stuff but i mean to your point sticky date pudding and i think the first one we did was enough to feed like 14 15 people it was a massive thing that took hours to steam but the fact that it was sitting in there for hours and cooking for so long had no adverse effects on it i mean it's a very dense mix and it takes a while to cook through but when you get to the end result and slather it with a whole heap of salted caramel it's happy days for everyone well one of our family friends invited us for dinner a little while ago and i was asked to make that for the family which was about 10 people for dinner and when i took it down great she put it aside bought out for dessert the ones that she'd made and kept our one she said i said why don't you bring it out she said because i want to eat it myself yeah (laughs) oh okay then so it is a a huge hit yeah yeah well yeah and it's reasonably simple process too i mean when we do the desserts and some people are fearful of desserts the the thing with dessert cooking and i suppose pastry cooking in general is I mean, we talk a lot about accuracy and temperature but that's accuracy in your ingredients so getting a good set of kitchen scales will make you a better dessert cook um so that's where it really needs to be accurate i mean a lot of our not a lot but some recipes will you know use the generic terms like add a splash or add a pinch or you know a dash or something like that whereas in dessert cookery that's not what it's about uh it's about getting accuracy within the recipe because you know that will yield the best results so i mean i suppose and letting the steam oven do its thing too let not being afraid of of things getting wet or you know too much moisture build up or anything like that i have worked and we have worked pretty hard to make sure these 
the recipes that we post, especially around the desserts, are reasonably easy, and a lot of them are based on classics, but reasonably easy and, um, you know, yield the best result. But the key to that is, is to make sure you follow the recipe. I mean, generally, I'm not a recipe follower. Um, you are, like... Totally. Yeah, retentive about it. <laughs> um but for savoury recipes and stuff like that, it doesn't matter so much. But desserts, it really does count. I think too, when I've been trialling your recipes as the crash test dummy for cooking with steam, the thing I've noticed, it's, not, it's never been the oven that's a problem. It's always been me, the technique. <laughs> <laughs> but it has. You know, when I made the reverse lemon tarts, I, I didn't follow the process properly about making the custard and yeah. so it, it wasn't right and it wasn't going to steam right but it wasn't the steam oven's fault it was how I made the custard and didn't follow the recipe properly so I've always found it's what like gar- you know in my day job it's garbage in garbage out it's no different in cooking if you if you don't get the process right particularly with something like making custards yeah the steam oven is not going to make it better it's not going to make it worse yeah it actually helps you but um but yeah, you, I've, I've found that the, the things that I have done wrong in making those dessert recipes was always my lack of technique or misunderstanding of a process. And that's what, and yeah, and misunderstanding of a process is a, probably a good term because people process recipes in a different way, which is why when we did the website and when we started writing the recipes, there might be some slight differences in, let's say, a printed out PDF version of the method versus what you see on the video versus you know whatever else we do as far as posting the recipes because um the funny thing is about expectation around recipes and cooking and i mean i'm speaking more broadly and generally i suppose but again particularly because of desserts um you go and spend five six seven ten thousand dollars on an appliance and you instantaneously think that's going to make you a better cook and it, and it will improve your end results to a degree, but if you've got flawed preparation and flawed preparation technique, then it ain't going to work. Like it just, unfortunately, it just doesn't. So, I mean, we like people to use the recipes a lot of the time as a guideline. So you know, we do some simple stuff like here's how to steam a piece of fish properly. Um, but with the desserts, you know, sure you can add some flavorings and you can change your classic vanilla creme brulee to a orange and pistachio or whatever. Like, so you can certainly add that, but the base, le- you know, the base parts of those recipes, the eggs, the sugar, the cream, the milk, have to stay the same because otherwise it's not going to work. And if, especially if you skip a recipe, uh, if you skip an ingredient, like if you skip an ingredient, then it's, you know, and especially... You know where I'm leading to. I, I can know, see. You. I know you're gonna. I'm, I'm just. Yeah. But like you can see. You, I know like, you're bringing up that chocolate cake and yeah. the eggs. I know you are. Yeah. But if you skip an ingredient just by accident, um, the recipe fails, and your instantaneous. A, a lot of people's instantaneous reaction is it is it it's my appliance. My appliance isn't working properly. Um, my appliance didn't do the right job. So. What I like to say to people is if, if you're preparing a dinner party, the first thing that you should be preparing, the first thing that you should get as far done in advance as possible, the first thing that you should cook is always your dessert. Get that done out of the way. Take your time. Get your ingredients all weighed out. Go and buy 10 separate little mixing bowls to weigh everything out or plastic containers or whatever it is. It's... And one of the first things I learned when I was pastry cooking way back in the day was, you know, you don't make a cake mix and then get the cake tin prepared. You always prepare the cake tin first. So you grease it, line it, do whatever you need to do. And that way, that part of that job is done. So then when your cake mix is ready, your cake tin's ready and it's a bit more of a seamless operation getting your cake made so it's i always treat desserts like that getting that pre-preparation stuff done getting everything laid out with with savory cooking you can be on the fly a little bit 
like you know you can run out and grab a pinch of salt or you know whatever you need to do um but with dessert cooking just lay it all out double check your ingredients make sure your quantities are right make sure your kitchen scales are you know relatively accurate um and then you'll find you'll have much more success and especially at a dinner party if you can get that done and what we call in the trade boxed off it means it's finished as far as it can be uh you'll find life a whole lot easier and i mean for every demonstration presentation anything that i ever do the first thing that i start with is always my dessert because generally it takes the longest because you have to spend time on it you have to be accurate with it so yeah little i suppose a little tip in there just get that stuff done first and you'll be halfway there to success well, I know that I can never blame the appliance because I know that you've cooked over 300 recipes in it. So if ever the recipe doesn't work, Paul, I know it's me, not the oven. But although at the moment we are having problems with it, poor thing, but it is uh, eight years old, so yeah. it's allowed to have a, a moment where it's not working properly. The um, So apart from the... And probably, as I mentioned before, the custards were, for me, the hardest thing because I thought I could make a custard on a on a stove top, but really the sort of custards that I'm now doing through your recipes, and when you said before that, you know, oh, if you wanted to change it from vanilla to orange, I still don't know that I'm confident enough to know how to change the flavorings and how much orange would make it too much yeah. or not enough where it'd be kind of bland. So I... I still rely on recipes for that because I still think that that's an important element that you could kill a really good uh, dessert by having it overpowering. And yeah, I, of course you can. I mean, and like proof in the, I mean, I hate to say it, but proof in the pudding is, is we've done various versions over the past couple of weeks of sort of this leche flan, purin, whatever you want to call it. Um, some you liked more than others, some I liked more than others, and they were different. Um, mm. And the best way to <clears throat> manage that, and although sometimes people may say, oh, you can't do that, it's not very good for you, is the best way to tell is taste on the run, taste on the go. I mean, if we're making a, a custard-based dessert, there's sugar, there's eggs, there's da 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 and you want to add some sort of flavouring to it, take a little bit of that sort of liquid mix before it's been steamed and really if you're worried about consuming a little bit of raw egg just stick it in a pot cook it up even if it scrambles and splits or whatever but you still get a flavor profile from it um so how much orange is enough well it's personal taste and the only way you're going to know that is by actually tasting it so have faith in knowing that orange and let's say vanilla is going to reasonably go it's going to go well together but certainly orange let's say orange as a flavor profile can overpower what is you know a vanilla bean creme brulee it may well if you add too much so what's enough so start off with a little bit give it a taste start up, add a bit more whatever the key important thing to adding flavor profiles to recipes is it's very difficult to take away once you've added more but it's easy to add if you add too much, you, for want of a better term, you cooked. You, there's, you, there's not a lot of recourse and rescue that you've got. But if you start off small and build it up as you go, you'll get to a point where you, you'll be satisfied with it. So don't go all in. Just gradually in. And that's probably the best way to manage it. And the other key thing, um, especially with your dessert cooking, it's probably... <clears throat> Uh, something that commercial kitchens and restaurants have been doing for a while is salt plays a massive part in dessert cooking. Uh, salt? Yep. Okay. So <laughs> salt uh, salt in a, in a creme caramel, in a creme brulee, in a lemon tart, in anything like that plays a massive part in the flavour because it's no different to, and we've talked about it before, to savoury cooking. Salt enhances flavour in both sweet and savory cooking. So a little pinch of salt in your creme brulee mix will give you a better end result than without it. It's not gonna be salty to taste, but it actually just picks up the flavor and enhances it. So 
in the case of like a lemon tart or whatever, you know, a lemon custard or a lemon curd or anything like that, you need less because remember mm. acid is a flavor enhancer as well. So the lemon juice works for you there, but something without an acid. So a straight custard based dessert, um, a pinch of salt is a very good thing. And so, I mean, the, the best example of that is salted caramel. Well, I was just going to bring that up and say, well, it must need a fair bit then, because if you can put a pinch in and have no... Well, salted caramel is a different beast, but, I mean, salted caramel is a sugar which has been cooked down to a caramel, which really gives you super, super sweetness, and it's just sugar, really. It's sugar, butter, so a little yummy. bit of cream. That's why it's so yummy. Um, but the counterpoint to that sweetness in a salted caramel is the salt. It actually softens the the sweetness of it a little bit mm. and which is why it's so yummy yeah, over well, anything uh, yeah it's good over anything. yes it's yeah. just on anything mm. well that's interesting because i would never have thought of putting salt in yeah salt salt in cakes salt in cupcakes and muffins in custards in like there's not a dessert that i won't now i don't season it as heavily as i would do a piece of fish or a piece of chicken or whatever but um certainly a pinch of salt is don't show i work and use good salt too what do you mean by good salt uh say a natural salt so you don't want an iodized salt where iodine's added uh, because it's a can give it a metallic taste uh so a natural flake salt river salt whatever you know something I mean, the, uh, our friends in the US w- would know that the common thing is kosher salt over there, um, which has effectively got nothing added to it. So uh, a natural sea salt is always the best in your desserts. Iodized salt is really... Well, I'm not a big fan. So anything that's natural that doesn't have iodine added, you're going to get a better salt flavour. Okay. Or a better f- end flavour. So, yeah, less iodized salt and more natural salt, especially in your desserts, natural salt. And don't forget, if you use, even especially in the desserts too, if you use flake salt, not rock salt, but flake salt, like say Murray River salt flakes or molden or something like that, it can add a textural element too. So if you can imagine your sticky day pudding and you give it a reasonably good seasoning, you're biting into something that's, it's pretty sweet it's got a lot of brown sugar in there pretty sweet and then the dates are quite sweet and then you get this just imagine in between your teeth you get this little salty crunch right in the middle of it like it, it, it will actually enhance the flavour of the whole thing so it can add a textural element too I think I'll have to try that now yeah got me all motivated here oh good well I think that's really it for dessert so I well, know a bit we of a could general start, overview well I know we could yeah. start talking about some more but I think this is about long enough for everyone to listen to at the moment maybe um, well thank you for that Paul and no worries Monday morning so let's uh, get on with our day so thanks no worries see you see later. later bye thanks for listening to this podcast as we explore home cooking in a modern world we'd love you to subscribe and for more information please go to our website cookingwithsteam.com Thank you.